All right, guys, welcome to, I believe, the fifth part of our uh, full scale battle of the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, so, if you saw our last video, you'll know that the French infantry assault against the British held and coalition held bluffs south of Waterloo have failed. So, in response the British and Dutch cavalry are going on a massive counterattack. Let's see if we can find our Dutch boys out there. Going on a massive counterattack to take advantage of the withdrawing French infantry to try to take out as many of them as possible for wow possible before they can regroup and move in for an effective secondary organized assault. So what I'm going to do is send forth a massive herd of horses, about 500 guard medium cavalry or guard dragoons, I believe, dragoon guards, about 600 guard heavy cavalry, and about a thousand medium cavalry, uh, more I guess normal dragoons. So, uh, are the first kind of stage here is we're taking out some of the, uh, the basically the remains of the four uh, groupings of French infantry that had assaulted the positions at La Hessel and then uh, eastward from there. Now, I'm being a little cautious because I, I don't have the best cavalry and obviously you know these guys can always form square use their bayonets pretty effectively uh, the light infantry throw down some spikes if they have them uh, like these guys are forming square these guys are forming square so the nice thing about having some of these uh, dragoons is I can fire from a mounted position without having to dismount and I'm just wreaking havoc on the remains of this first French infantry assault against the Bluffs. We're about at 3 p.m. in the battle, and at this point in the fight, Napoleon is aware that the Prussian army is beginning to approach. Uh, so it was actually kind of a genius maneuver what had happened at this battle. Uh, as much as I'd like to give credit to my uh, my sixth great grandfather Arthur Wellesley, it was really Blucher more than anyone else who should be remembered as um, the victor of this battle. If only one person were to be over here, the uh, coalition cavalry doing a good job of continuing. Very much in the same style I am, taking a, a little restrained style assault strategy against the French troops. Just trying to hold their ground, buy some time, get fellow their com well, get some of their fellow comrades out of the fight. Uh, but what happened was, and this was before Waterloo itself, over at Quatre Bois, which I believe I've talked about. Napoleon realized that he could not defeat both Prussia and the UK at the same time. He needed to divide the coalition armies. He could defeat them one at a time, but not at the same time. So he sent a small force under... Um, I don't think it was under Marshal Ney. I think I said that in a previous video. I don't think that's actually correct. But under one of his uh, marshals, he sent uh, a force to distract the Prussian army. And uh, led his main force to go destroy Wellington's army. And then he could use the remains of the Battle of Waterloo to fight uh, Blucher and defeat the Prussian army as well. Uh, he had done this before at the Battles of Jena and Auerstadt, so it wasn't anything necessarily new for him. It was a pretty kind of textbook, like literal, out of, uh, out of Napoleon's playbook, textbook maneuver. But what 
The point did not count on was Blucher doing the exact same thing. So what Blucher did that was genius was he sent a small part of his army to go distract Napoleon's distraction force. And uh, not only did they distract him, but they actually convinced Napoleon's smaller distraction force that they were facing the whole Prussian army. So when Napoleon gets word at about 1 p.m., about 1300, that Blucher is on his way to the battle, he's in a panic because Blucher is not supposed to be anywhere close to this battle. This is part of the reason why Napoleon is eager to end this battle in one day because uh, should Blucher's forces arrive at the estimated time based on Napoleon's kill, it'll be about nightfall and they won't be able to engage in the battle on day one. Now he can, again, like I said, he could defeat the Prussians on day two if he can defeat the UK-led coalition forces on day one. Uh, so Napoleon is eager to crush the British forces, but Wellington is also aware that Blucher has arrived, and there's a famous uh, Wellesley quote, something to the degree of, Night or the Prussians must arrive now. <laughs> Uh, because his forces are getting hammered. But uh, he thrusts forward an effective cavalry counterattack, trying to sweep up some of the routing French troops of that first infantry maneuver. Uh, that some of their troops are doing a good job of just holding some of our guys back from being able to take most of them out. But we do manage to essentially neutralize any threat these guys could pose for the remainder of the battle. Uh, unfortunately for Wellington, or I should really say Wellesley, unfortunately for Wellesley, his cavalry are largely inexperienced. He doesn't have seasoned veterans among his cavalry. So when the cavalry go on this counterattack and they succeed, they keep going. And that's one of the blunders of Wellesley's day at the battle, is he ends up wasting almost all of his cavalry on this attack uh, because they just keep going. They end up charging straight south into Deleon's, uh reserves and we're going to see some more of the action of what happens as a result of that. Uh, but essentially Delon was not at all expecting the British cavalry to counterattack so deeply into his line, so he throws his cavalry reserve to counter the coalition cavalry counterattack. So it's a double counter. Mm. Had to get a sip of my tasty beverage there. Uh, by the way, it's always a good idea to hit that pause button, get your snacks and drinks on. Uh, feel free to sound off in the comments below if you are Team British Snack or Team French Snack. Uh, while I am Team Britain in the Army, I gotta say, um, I do occasionally like a good cafe au lait and croissant. This little uh, fried beignet. Uh, just getting past the troop deployment phase here. So what we're seeing is, uh, I'm going to be playing as the French now, ooh, uh, so get your coffee ready. Uh, the French cuirassiers, the uh, reserve cavalry forces under General Delon are moving in to counterattack the British uh, cavalry forces that are now stuck out in the field. Uh, so the reason why Delon was so eager to do this was he had a massive amount of artillery in a very vulnerable position. Like we talked about in that first video, there was a lot of rain the night before the battle and a little bit in the morning that prevented the artillery from being able to be utilized. So a lot of the French artillery is actually pretty exposed south of uh, a small farming village known as Papelot. Uh, so as a result, 
Uh, the French are terrified that the British are actually going to overwhelm their artillery and take them out of the fight. And if you know anything about Napoleon, you probably know that he's an artillery officer. He, um, he was an officer from, I believe, Corsica who fought in the French military in, uh, in Egypt as an artillery officer before rising to power. So uh, taking out the British artillery, or the French artillery is more than just a tactical advantage. It's the heart of Napoleon's prime. Uh, so you can understand why the French cavalry are now moving into position to make sure they don't lose that artillery. Good old fashioned cavalry charge. Get our horns blowing. Oh, that guy went down. Now, the ensuing fight would pit most of both the, co I should say, the UK-led coalition army and the French army's cavalry against each other. Uh, initially, the coalition cavalry were just in a position to counterattack the withdrawing French infantry from that infantry assault, but because of the growing need to prevent the now engaged French cavalry from assaulting the vulnerable infantry up on the hills that we saw battling in the earlier video, largely casualty ridden. Now, Wellesley must send more cavalry into this melee at uh, the base of the hill just about east of La Haye to make sure the French cavalry do not overrun his positions up on the bluffs because he really doesn't have very many troops up there to defend against a large scale counter uh, attack from French cavalry. Uh, French cavalry, as you can see, man, these are really beautiful horses. <laughs> uh, French cavalry did a good job of dissipating the British troops out here. We got the lifeguards. These are the guard heavy cavalry of that British initial cavalry counterattack. I uh, got some cavalry coming in. Looks like some of the British dragoons, maybe dragoon guards, had dismounted, try to fight on foot. to see where the rest of this battle is happening. I think it, a lot of the... We got some uh, carabiners too. Those are the me, the French medium cavalry. I'm using the carabiners to represent them. Uh, finally coming to this fight. This is the point where I just am like, <laughs> are you guys going to join or what? Are you going to make me fight this battle by myself? Uh, looks like the... Yeah, a lot of the dragoons, the the British Dragoons are trying to dismount, trying to get some shots off. I think they have better range when they're on foot, which is why a lot of the times the Dragoons will dismount. Uh, but also, this time in military history, you don't actually see a lot of large-scale cavalry charges like what we're actually seeing right now. Largely because a lot of the infantry are pretty well equipped to counter those cavalry charges, they'll get in square, fixed bayonets, and essentially become like giant turtle shells with pointy sticks. Um, it's really hard for cavalry to counter a well-positioned infantry square. So as a result, a lot of cavalrys about this time in Europe are converting to what's referred to as mounted infantry. Troops that arrive to a battlefield on horse but fight on foot. Uh, you do see this with camels as well in smaller numbers. Uh, we've talked about mounted infantry in our series on the campaigns of Khalid Ibn al Walid, uh, famously using camels to deliver mounted infantry to uh, across deserts. But we're going to see this continued cavalry fight. In the next stage here, I think that's the one we're looking for.
in the next stage here as more coalition cavalry pour into the battle i think this is where we're going to see the dutch cavalry show up their light cavalry uh, we're going to see about 1300 more dragoons pour into the fight about 400 light cavalry dutch light i believe light dragoons and then about 1200 heavy cavalry as well for the french they're going to continue this cavalry counter counter attack uh, try to pour in, try to capture the field east of La Haison, west of Papelo. And we are back to playing as Britain here. Uh, but we're actually also going to see some of our Dutch cavalry. Which I will say we're actually the MVPs here, so shout out to everyone from the Netherlands. The Dutch Cavalry, the United Provinces, which I believe is actually uh, Netherlands and Belgium in uh, Empire Total War. The Dutch Cavalry saved my skin in this fight because uh, my troops actually get kind of overwhelmed. I've got the Light Dragoons, but the French Cuirassiers charge straight into them, which makes it hard for me to utilize their... Uh, I believe they're using carbines. <laughs> Uh, which is what uh, the term carabiner comes from. It's uh, a type of a firearm that was developed specifically for cavalry. It's like a hybrid between a rifle and a uh, like a pistol or a revolver. Like a two-handed handgun. That's probably the best way I can describe it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to throw my uh, Dragoons up, uh, up to the front. And I believe my forces are the closest to the enemy right now. Get a nice shot of the nature here. This battle was fought in the final days of uh, spring, the late spring, early summer, on uh, June 18th. So I'm sure there was a little bit of a need for watering the, the grass out there in the field south of Waterloo. Alright, so we're seeing my Dukes doing a good job of cutting up some of these French heavy cavalry, the Curseers. Again, it's not necessarily exactly the, uh, the sort of cavalry charge you might see from the Rohirrim and at uh, Pelennor Fields, but this is, of course, a more realistic approach to what cavalry would have been used uh, for and the way they would have been used in Napoleonic style battles. You're not seeing much of these like giant spear arms uh, cavalry charges, though the cuirassiers are uh, getting eager to get their sabers wet. But uh, you do see a lot more of these more mounted uh, troops with firearms firing from a mounted position or dismounting, fighting as uh, dismounted cavalry, mounted infantry. French cuirassiers look good as always. I love that gray horse. Got the nice chestnut color, I believe this is the color, the, the word used to describe this color horse for my light reviews. And the Dutch, in the bright blue, coming into the battle. Got some uh, guys on some white horses. These are the Dutch Hushers, or Hussars, I believe is the proper way to, to uh, pronounce it. Dutch Hussars coming into the fight. Looks like maybe they have multicolored horses. Maybe the officers get the white ones. Very cool. My cavalry coming into the fight, trying to surround some of the French cuirassiers. Looks like I've got some of my dragoons up here, taking out some of the cuirassiers up here as well. Uh, looks like some of my dragoons are starting to rout, so I'm sending in more as the Dutch come in to save my bacon. British dudes get their sabers out. Those look awesome. I want one of those. 
Uh, if you guys don't know much about me, I'm a fencing instructor, so I love a good old-fashioned antique sword. Alright, looks like some of the the Dutch uh, Dragoons have dismounted, fighting on foot, some of the French Curiosiers. More Curiosiers pouring into the fight where I've got my troops quickly getting routed. Some of the Dragoons, the Dutch Dragoons, holding the uh, little cross around here. I love their, their helmets. Makes me think about ancient Greece. Uh, more French cavalry pouring into my troops, and it looks like they might actually overwhelm my inexperienced Dragoons. Uh, like we said, most of the British cavalry was inexperienced going into this battle. So while they were eager to go on the attack, they were not strategic about it. And another one of Arthur Wallace's famous quotes about his cavalry during the battle was that uh, they were very good at charging, but they were very bad about doing literally anything else. <laughs> uh, so they charged forward, and they, they really didn't know how to do anything else. They didn't know how to regroup, how to effectively uh, maneuver, go on any tactical withdrawals. Uh, here we go, some of the... the French, uh, looks like some of the Dutch Dragoons, like, or Hussars, the Dutch Hussars, coming into the fight. Like I said, saving my bacon, helping me hold back the uh, evidently much more experienced French Cuirassiers. Elsewhere in the battle, it looks like the British heavy cavalry have overwhelmed the French forces over here. Anytime you guys want to join the fight and help me out is fine by me. Uh, it looks like the Dutch are really the heroes of this battle, helping hold my forces together even though they're really starting to break. So again, shout out to uh, any any uh, Dutch out there. They they do have some hussars that have broken. The French cavalry just holding like freaking heroes of France. More hussars pouring into the fight. Dragoons on foot. Just seeing if I hopefully have any more troops coming back into the fight. I feel like I do somewhere. Looks like some shattered uh, troops. Maybe I don't. But we do have some of the dismounted Dutch Dragoons just holding this crossroads, which is a good idea. Well, here we go. I've got some troops coming back to the fight from over there. But uh, this is really the, the French holdout doing a good job of holding their forces back. Looks like they may finally be in retreat, and uh, looks like they are in withdrawal. So we're going to go ahead and end this section of the fight here. Uh, so if you like this one, feel free to hit the like button, but go ahead and uh, click that continue button. Move on into the sixth, I think, uh, video in this series on our full-scale reenactment of Waterloo.